so far, a lot of the equations and expressions we've dealt with have been relatively tidy. One variable, one spot, nice and easy. Today, we're going to deal with strategies uh, for what happens when they aren't so nice, neat, and tidy. Because unfortunately, that's not the way the real world works. And let's face it, if math doesn't apply to the real world, what are we wasting our time for? So today, we're going to talk about two things. One, you've probably already learned, which is combining like terms. The other is the distributive property, which uh, should be something relatively new. Hopefully some of you have heard of it before, um, but we're going to work on a definition for the distributive property based on uh, what we do in the notes. We're going to work on that definition tomorrow in class. But first, talking about combining like terms, uh, and we're going to work up to using it as a strategy to actually solve equations. So you probably have done things like this before. First of all, what is a term? Well, a term basically are all these things that are separated by addition or subtraction signs. Now be careful because when we combine them, we're going to look at a couple examples, we need to make sure that we pay attention to what sign is in front of these numbers. Okay, so this is plus, minus, plus. Uh, and this can be thought of as a positive 7 here. Um, like terms then, we're going to combine them, are the same variable raised to the same power. So this then would be 9x plus 5 minus 3y. So this is adding that 2x here. So 7x is over here, 2x over here. Again, think of the coefficient as how many x's there are. This means x plus x, let me actually write it out here. This is what you should be thinking in your head. Don't just think of it as 7x. This is x plus x, 2, 3, 4, 5, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Over here, this has plus 2x's. Well, there's 7x's here, 2x's here, 9x's total. I am not going to make you write all of this out. But this is what you should be thinking in your head. In your head, how many, seven, how many x's are there here? How many x's are there here? Remember what x is. It represents something in real life. The thing we're solving for, the thing we don't know. Same thing with y. So here, first job, you've done this before, is to identify the like terms. So using my highlighter, I've got x here, x here. Um, raised to the same power, we deal with next year in algebra. Basically, that means if I have uh, x squared, uh, on here, that's not the same as 9x. We'll talk about that uh, potentially tomorrow in class. We'll see if it comes up. Um, one important thing to know, when I'm going to combine these, this is not, uh, think about what's happening with this 2x here. I have 9x's, yes, but I'm actually taking away two of those x's. It says minus. So that would leave me with 7x's. And then we have plus 3y plus 5, bring, bring everything else along. This 5, there's no variable in here, so I can't add it to any of these. I'm done. And that's all the work you have to show. Um, on the next one. All right, I have a C here. I have a C here, and I have a C here. And then my other like terms, I miss these. Notice I have a 2 with no variable here and an 8 with no variable there. So what I need to do is I need to combine all the Cs, then I'll combine the ones that don't have variables. Do the other way if you want. So here I have five C's. C plus C plus C plus C plus C. I'm taking away four of those. That leaves me with one C. This, it's a one C because if this is zero C's, this is a zero here in front of me, even though there's nothing there. If that's a zero, that means there's no C's at all. But since I wrote one C, we have to assume that the coefficient here here is 1. Remember, 1 times anything is itself. So now I have 1c plus 8 minus 2 minus 1c. Okay. Notice these are not different terms because there is a multiplication sign here. That's going to be important later. c minus c is no c's at all, so I don't even write it. That means all I have left is 8 minus 2, which is 6. That's it. Down here, it's even faster. No like terms at all. The answer here, if I'm going to simplify this, is 4m plus 9m minus 2. Notice on all these, we are simplifying each expression. 
because they're not equations, because there are no equal signs. The best I can do is simplify them, make them smaller or more condensed than they start out as. All right, now we get to the distributive property. This can be a little bit difficult, but if we think about what is actually written here, it makes it a little bit easier. Again, we're only simplifying, so I'm not figuring out what n equals. I'm just kind of condensing this, making it an easier thing to handle. What you'll notice here is you know, we've got parentheses. That's an issue because I can't add these, and I can't add these because that would be doing subtraction before I do parentheses. Aunt Sally would not be pleased. So I've got an issue. What do I do? How do I solve this problem? Well, it would seem like we're stuck. What we're going to use is the distributive property. Think about what this actually means. What this means is I have six of these groups of five plus n. That means I have one, here's one group, here's another group, here's three groups, I'm going to run out of room, four, five, put another one over here, six. So what I really have here, if I rewrite this and expand it, is five plus n plus 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 five plus n which colors, minus two n's. So using the distributive property, and there is a shorter way to do this, using the distributive property here, I see that I have one, two, three, four, five, six fives that I repeatedly add again and again. Now remember, what is repeated addition? Multiplication. So since it's six times everything inside here, that means it's six times five. There are six fives. Similarly, notice there are six n's. So I'm going to add, because these are all plus signs, right? Plus six of those n's. And then minus the 2n. So we're just bringing that along with the right. So now notice what I have. If I kind of, uh, if, uh, now I have 30 plus 6n minus 2n. Notice I just multiply that out. And if I combine like terms then, now I can do the subtraction. I don't have any parentheses. Using the distributive property gets rid of those parentheses for me. So I have 30 plus 6n's here minus 2 of them gives me 4n. Can't go any further because 30 and 4n are not like terms. But notice what I did there. All I did, I mean this is what I did in my head. You're not going to write this out. Distributive property is supposed to be a shortcut. This is what we call a long cut. But like I said, this is what you should be thinking in your head. All we're really doing, when I have six times the quantity, five plus n, yeah, I could add those together and then multiply by six, or I could multiply by six and then add the two products. We'll explore that in greater detail tomorrow. I'll show you again right here. So I have three two c's minus seven. Same thing, this is not what you're doing on your paper. Let me switch colors here. This is not what you're writing down. This is the long cut that you should be thinking in your head. So I have 2c minus 7, there's one of those, plus another 2c minus 7, plus a third 2c minus 7, and then tacked on the end here, I've got a little minus c. We'll bring him back in there later. So what do I have? I have 1, 2, 3, of these two C's and three of these minus sevens. And you might be thinking here, uh-oh, those aren't like terms, the two C and the three. Well, think about what that means. Think about what two C is. If I have three of these, two C is C plus C, right? If I have three C plus C's, that's what two C's actually is. That's six C's. Doesn't matter that these aren't like terms because it's multiplication, not addition. Like terms, combining like terms, is for addition and subtraction. If this were three plus two C, then we'd have an issue. So this is six C minus 21 minus C. And now I've got six C minus C, that's five C. 
minus 21. There we go. That's as simple as it gets. Again, you don't have to write this. This is what you're thinking in your head. Yeah, I'm an artist. Okay, so if that's what you're thinking in your head, what you're actually writing is this right here. Show that you're multiplying the three by everything inside the parentheses. All right, one more concept then, and that is solve. Notice I'm highlighting, I'm kind of looking at the directions here. Now, here's a big problem. I have one x here and three x's here. A lot of people when they do this, they'll do divided by three. And they'll get, well, uh, wait a minute, what do I do? X, and here's an X, and here's a 16. Uh, what happens? What do I do? Because I don't know what to do with that X. Do I divide by 1, or do I divide by 3? Well, the answer is neither. I can't divide right now. Before I solve, I need to make sure it's as simple as I can possibly get. I need to simplify before I solve. Solve is like the last thing you do. So here I have 1X, and here I have 3X. First thing you should think in your head, oh, that's easy, that's four x's. So four x's, if I have four groups of x, it equals 48. Well, in order to figure out what one group of x is, divide it out, this is just like yesterday, x equals 12. Just like yesterday, let's test that. Plug 12 in right here, 12 plus three times 12 equals 48. 12 plus 36, we put question marks here, shouldn't we? And this is 48 equals 48. Check. Good solution. Next. Same thing here. I have seven C's here. One C here. Don't divide. Get them together. Six C equals 102. So six groups of C's. I would divide that to figure out what one group is. That's going to be 17. So check it. Seven times 17 minus 17 is 102. 7 times 17 is 419 minus 17. And 119 minus 17 is 102. Notice I'm actually doing the math. If you need a calculator, that's fine. Just make sure you do the math before you circle this thing and say, yep, that's good. Pretty easy stuff once we simplify. So here's your homework tonight. Notice these two, or these first three, are just simplified. You cannot figure out what x equals if there are no equal signs. This one is solved. This one, same thing. Take a stab at this. Write an equation and solve. So pick a variable, set it up, solve the thing. A lot easier when we get into that routine. In addition, you have your journal prompt as usual. Good luck.